Hello, friends. I'm Taylor. And I'm Brittany. Together, we're two sisters who are here to help you learn some tips and tricks to help navigate this crazy journey called life. We bring you the perspective of a licensed mental health counselor, a.k.a. therapist and a new mother. And a slightly eccentric mom of two. When you combine us as sisters, we like to consider ourselves as quite the dynamic duo. So join us as we talk about all life has to offer. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and hit that follow, like, or subscribe button wherever you listen to podcasts for updates. If you're liking what you hear, leave us a five-star review. It helps us know what content you like and spreads the love to others to get resources and help for their mental health. Okay, that was you the okay, funniest. That was the funniest <laughs> intro I think I've ever done. My husband comes in and starts doing this, like fucking movements. It's like charades in the corner because he's trying not to interrupt. Um, it was to open the drawer and grab out his headphones for him, and I was like, "What is going? What?" <laughs> Yes, in case you didn't know, we have recorded the intro for every episode. So there you go. You got real life. There you go. You just got a real reaction. I was like trying so hard to keep it together, but he was over in the corner repeatedly moving his hands in charades. And I was like, no idea what's going on right now. That was hilarious. Lovely. Lovely. So pickles for everybody. Pretty could see my face. I was like, I got our YouTube recording for the faces. Okay, so rewind. Welcome to our episode today. <laughs> Hi, sister. We're here to talk about finding your path to healing. Um, this is one of those things like New Year. I, we were teaching in a children's Sunday school class the other day, and it was like right at the New Year. And they had asked, um, "What does the New Year mean for you?" And this one little guy who's like what, hey, like seven or so. He's six. Yeah. No, so, yeah, he's six. And all of a sudden, yeah. he yells out, "New Year, New Year!" And it was like so cute, but so aggressive. Like, yeah, no, no. <laughs> so, like, without hesitation, this is our new year, new you. We're gonna help you find your path to healing. So, this is about self healing. Um, to start this off, we are going to start with the principle of kintsugi. So, Tay, do you want to talk about the art? Yeah, of kintsugi? so I think we've mentioned this before, but probably. But we're gonna really highlight it this one today. So. Brittany came up with the idea for self-healing and it was a good one because I feel like that's something we're all on a journey to find of like peace within our soul. I was watching, um, I've mentioned this a few times, so shout out to, I think his name's Chris Hemsworth, but whoever the guy plays Thor um, yeah. in Limitless, but he's he's on like this path to healing his body, but also his mind. And I feel like we all kind of have that on a path to like heal ourselves and, and understand ourselves, which is pretty much what all the mental health world and therapy is. So when I was first in this field, story time, people, grad school was a nightmare. I don't know if I've told you this before, but it was really hard because what they would do is they would highlight everything for us in this program and be like, this is all your problems. This is where you could get triggered on. And it was, it was wise of them to do it because doing this job, you definitely get triggered, but they would go through and highlight all these things. And you would just come out feeling so broken that first year I just remember my mom just being like this has to get better I'm like I know it has to because this is a mess second year though it was like this journey of just becoming who you're meant to be like um it's like that song Orguitas in a in Encanto like you know it's like two little yeah Yeah. that's that's what Banks is favorite lately so I know that song well but it's like these little caterpillars becoming these beautiful butterflies these mariposas and like becoming who you're really supposed to be. And I feel like that's what this analogy is of self-healing and becoming who you're supposed to be. So when I was doing it, my friend had lived in Japan for um, a mission, for a church mission. And she had come back with this concept to me and I loved it where it was about kintsugi. And kintsugi is Japanese art form of ceramics. So what happens is, is they would take broken pieces of pottery or ceramic And instead of letting them be broken and throwing them away and discarding them, they would put them back together and honor the cracks that were made and create something more beautiful and more valuable. They would fill it with platinum, gold, and silver, anything that was like an expensive material. And they would honor and highlight these cracks in this gorgeous way to not super glue it together and not pretend like it ever happened, but to make it a part of its new life and to give it meaning and to give it this beautiful rarity. And they would make it more expensive than it was before. Which to me is what life is all about. We're meant to be these vases and these pieces of pottery that are broken over and over again. And to not 
hide the cracks that we have, not hide the scars that we have, but to honor and highlight and become something rare and something beautiful. And that's something that I felt like after experiencing so much brokenness from this program, I was becoming honored. I was earning my stripes is what I called it finally. And I was, every time something would happen, you know, like I was young and I was dating people and stuff. I'd just be like, I'm earning a stripe. I'm getting another one. I'm getting wisdom. And honestly, like being a counselor for teenage girls, yes, I earned my stripes and I have some wisdom. And it's because I got broken. It's because I healed, but I didn't heal hiding it. I didn't heal super gluing it. I healed to honor and to, to really give that a part of who I am and to become rare. And I think that's what I want us to use for when we're talking about this whole concept of self-healing is how can we honor, highlight, and make us more expensive, more rare, more beautiful than we could have ever been by not being broken. And I finally just told my husband a while ago, I'm like, my goal is to be all gold. I'm going to just break it up where I've just been filled up with all gold and one little piece of pottery. No, but I think that's no. the point of life. <laughs> I think that's the point of life. And I think there's an honor and a beauty to it is to to yeah. love what we become and not what we think we should stay as. And that's the goal in all of mental health. I love that. It's such a beautiful concept and art form. Yeah. So. I need to find like a, a piece of it because it's it's been something that's really inspired my life. And I feel like as I've taken on, you know, trauma victims and and just even regular mental health, like general, you know, depression, and anxiety. Um, it's become something that's kept me going and kept clients going. And it's a beautiful concept. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Just like something so beautiful can come from the pieces that you just feel so broken. Yeah. Um, and I hear a lot of the times too, that people come in and they say, I'm broken and broken. And I'm like, good, be broken. It's not so much about being broken. It's about what's next. What are we going to do with that break? Are we going to super glue it and treat us like dollar store stuff and throw it away? <laughs> or are we going to become something rare and fill it with our finest gold? And I think that the world and life is hard enough. It makes us think that we're only dollar store material and that we're worth being thrown away when we're not. Yeah. Yeah. We're worth taking that next level and making us into something rare because we are, we're each special. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're going to talk about kind of some of the steps to healing. So we have a few different steps here. I think five steps. Yeah, I did five. I broke it down pretty general. I mean, there's so many steps to healing, guys, and this is so complicated. So, yeah. you know, if I didn't get this your is kind step. Of basic. Like, yeah. Just kind of get you started on your steps to healing. This is going to yeah. be such a personal journey. Um, no one can di like dictate exactly what, like, you do this and this and this, and then you'll be all better. So, don't look at this like it's like a full formula, but just know it's some ideas on how to get yourself on that path. Mm hmm. I wish there was a cookie cutter for this one because it's hard. Like I wish there was a cookie cutter for so many things with mental health. Like oh my goodness, there's. I mean, yeah. it's all or parenting so hot. or it, yeah, it's all a hot mess. But the first one I did was you got to pick a path you want to take, and I always go back to this story that I heard before. It's a tale of two wolves. Brittany, do you want to read it? I literally just copied and pasted it. Sure. Yeah, I can read it. An old Cherokee is teaching his grandson about life. A fight is going on inside me, he said to the boy. It is a terrible fight, and it is between two wolves. One is evil. He is anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. He continued, the other is good. He is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The same fight is going on inside you and inside every person too. The grandson thought about it for a minute and then asked his grandfather, which wolf will win? The old Cherokee simply replied, the one you feed. I love this that. This was the coolest parable story. And it, it's, I guess, repeated in a lot of Native American um, stories, like where they pass it down. And yeah, I thought it was, beautiful. yeah, I, I think it's beautiful where it says it's the one you feed and we all have these two wolves. It's not so much like well, you're born without that wolf or you earn that wolf or whatever it is. It's no, it's the one that you're choosing in that moment. And I think as we get broken and we have life happen to us, it's really easy to go towards the first wolf of sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity. Like, I don't know how many times I pity myself. My poor mom is like, Taylor, get back up and go. You know, like it's really hard, 
but the more that I would focus on the other one, the more it would win out. And that's where it's, it's this constant battle in this journey of when you're healing and getting back up from a break, that's pretty much what you got to do is, is pick which wolf you're going to feed. Yeah. I'd heard the other day I was listening to another podcast. I can't remember where it was, but they had said, um, how, like, what was it exactly? It was something along the lines of if you look for like the worst and what's to come and you only think of all of the horrible things that can happen, mm -hmm. then that's what you're going to focus on. But if you shift your focus to what about all the good things that could happen? What about mm -hmm. all the good things that can come? Mm -hmm. Then your mindset shifts. So it's kind of like that with these wolves. If we're thinking of all of the horrible things that can come from our situation, mm -hmm. then we're going to become angry and like all of these worst case scenarios. It's going to just give us all of this sorrow and self-pity. But then if we think of all the potential that could come from these things, um, then it's going to give us joy and peace and hope. And I think it's so such a good reminder of just which we're going to focus. Mm -hmm. So I think it really plays into the Kintsugi analogy to me of, you know, which one's going to earn me the gold and which, which traits are going to get me there. And that's my motivation always is which one's going to make me a more rare, better person that has become something beautiful. And if I feed the wolf, that's, the one that I want to feed. I want to be angry. I want to be whatever in those moments, then I'm not going to get that, that end goal that I really want. And it's, it's hard at times. Yeah. And I think some people think too, if you let the other wolf come out at times that you're feeding it and it's like, no, 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 there's a balance too. Like you have I was just going to gonna say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to acknowledge the other wolf is there. You have to acknowledge that you're going to have these feelings. Like you wouldn't be human if you didn't have both these feelings, right? That, that like, there's actually like disorders of not having the like full round of feelings. So like, it's good to have these feelings. It's more about how do you behave on them and how do you let them rule you? And that's what he's saying. Like, which one are you feeding versus which one are you acknowledging and saying you are there, but I don't want to give you a lot of attention. And that's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. But like, take your moment. Like I remember when was that? Probably like a week or two ago. I was really wallowing for a sec, right? And some of just like life circumstances and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was probably like one in the morning and I was crying and I was like, you know, what? I haven't given myself a chance to mm -hmm. actually like feel those feelings, to actually feel some of that like self-pity and anger and resentment and just all of these like, these like kind of, you know, darker feelings like the dark wolf. And so in that moment, I was like, you know what? I'm going to feel it right now. I'm going to let it out. I'm going to get my tears out and then we're going to move on. And so the next morning I woke up and I was ready to go, but yep. I did have to take a moment and just say, Hey, I really am having these feelings and it's okay to acknowledge them for a second. Yeah. But I feel like feeding is where you let them become what you're doing versus, you know, like, like letting them out, letting that, that wolf be acknowledged or however you want to refer to it. It's, it's a very different thing than feeding and letting them have a moment is good. Like that's what you need to do. Exactly. Yeah. It wasn't like feeding them and like fueling my fire and getting like so yeah. upset. And, you know, yeah. I'm thinking about like all like the, you know, cartoon or like Count of Monte Cristo, you know, mm -hmm. anybody who's read the Count of Monte Cristo, like I wasn't, I'm not going to take the time to be like, I'm so angry and I'm going to get revenge. And my whole life's motto is to get revenge. And, you know, like, don't feel that way, feel the other way. So, yeah. Well, it, I just, I mean, it was funny. You had called me earlier today and Banks was having his moment. He's in sleep regression of four months, right? Oh, yeah. Poor and guy. He, oh, yeah. Poor you. So, <laughs> but it was it was funny because I, I just remember sitting there being like, your feelings are valid, but you are okay. And that was that's totally like the perfect basic example of this concept of being like, yeah, I get you're upset, buddy. It's okay that you're upset. I know you're tired and you wanted food, I think, at that moment. And I was like, I get it, bud. But you're also okay. And it's going to be fine. We're almost home, you know? And I think that's where it's that balanced thing of, um, you're, you're not feeding the wolf by going and being like, whoa, poor is you, you deserve to be so mad. Keep being mad. You know, it's that balance kind of person. Yeah. Your life sucks. Everything's horrible. Yeah. yeah. You have nothing good ever. And it's like, no, his life is perfect. Like so good, you know, not perfect, but so good. Like, well, he's yeah. a baby. I mean, it's pretty perfect. He's pretty perfect right now. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that one. Okay. The second one is to have a plan and goals. We've talked about goals recently. Yeah. Yeah. We just so did a motivating. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing though, is when you are healing, you need to kind of see that there's a projection forward or an ending. Like when I was going through this whole thing, 
you know, the, the first year they kind of told us how it was going to be, but then you're like, wait, is it really going to be this way? Or you're like, the first year is really hard. Second year is rebuilding. Third year is application. And I was like, is this going to actually happen? And so second year it came and I was like, this better happen. This is the plan. This is the goal. Like <laughs> this better really happen. And it like did. You promised me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you promised. Um, yeah. So I think for people, it's good to say like there, there is something getting me out. There is something that's going to give motivation. And we don't always get that like with illness or other things in our lives. Like we can't say there's that, but we can say that there is a plan to give me some relief for a moment in some way. And it's that balancing of, of that. I think also to the goals part um, is is being able to break it down more for you and being able to see how like how how you can better apply some of these like healing concepts in your life. So this one's kind of like it just logically makes sense, I think. Yeah, I think so. I I think it totally does. Yeah, yeah. give yourself something to kind of work for. Know it will get better, whatever that's going to look like. Sometimes yeah. it is really hard to remember that. Like you mentioned, illness, and that's a yeah. That would yeah. be, that's a heavy one, but They're just um, I teach a little Shakespeare class at our homeschool co-op and it was really cute because every week we start with like our, what's our highs and what's our lows. And so this one um, student in class today, he's, his brother has been struggling some with some health things. He was in a car accident that was really bad and he's already in a wheelchair and, and he was just like something this week for me was that my brother is going to get out. He's getting out of the hospital. And he's been in the hospital since like, oh, when was that? Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. I think. Yeah. yeah, it's been a while. And mm-hmm. so like they had had this goal, right? But just knowing that there is always hope, whatever that looks like. And no matter how long it takes that, yeah, have a plan, have your goals. Okay, so our third um Oh, whatever we want to call them. Our third way (laughs) to do self-healing is think about what could be your obstacles and how could you work around them? Well, this is a, this is a good one. I, I will just start out by saying that I am the first one to like get so stuck on some of those obstacles sometimes. And Taylor knows this where I'll just like that stupid Instagram video. I'll catastrophize. I'll catastrophize. (laughs) Think of all the things that will not happen. We gotta <laughs> post that one again. Um, yeah, I think it's hard. Always, well, like, the hardest part is like the application of this. It's not easy to heal, and there will be obstacles. And I think in our head, like I mean, this week alone, January is a really hard month for people, and I see this a lot. The winter blues, it's it's bad, and I have a lot of attempts and just an increase in suicidal ideations and all these other things, and. And the one thing that I'm interested always in is people really think they're not going to get to this point. And that's the obstacle usually is that they don't think that they can get to this dip or they don't think they can get as low as whatever. And I'm not saying that's like, but it's just, they always like the reality is you're going to have an obstacle, whatever it is, however it happens, it's going to happen. And the reality is you got to deal with it and got to face it. But people just don't like to think of those because then they think, well, it's going to deter me or it's not going to motivate me. And it's like, well, okay, then what happens if you get there and you don't know how to deal with it? Like, isn't that worse? That's when you usually get hung up versus if you're just real with yourself and saying, yeah, these are the hard parts of healing. And the hard part of healing, most of all, is thinking like it gets hopeless. It does get hopeless because you're going to feel, and there's this chart, which I should post for you guys, where healing is not linear. It does not go like you think it should. Those grass that are like perfect that just go all the way up slanted up it it goes up down up down up down and it's like a hot i even saw one like the graph when we were in grad school where it's like swirls it looks like a roller coaster literally like it was like (laughs) lines everywhere and it's a hot mess and finally you get to like heels but it's like guys it's not it's not straightforward it is not there is no a b like it there is no it's a to k to p to q to t d and And there's some days on your journey to self-healing like I had mentioned before with They're the wolves, some numbers. Like, yeah, you'll like, you'll feel like I got this. I'm doing mm-hmm. great. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden it's like, oh, I just need to cry. Like mm-hmm. that is okay. Remember it's that awkward. is one of your obstacles that yeah. you will feel better. And then you will feel like shapoopies again for a second. And that is yeah. okay. But then remember, like have a plan for how can you work around that? Like how yeah. can you pull yourself out of that rut? Uh, whether it's having like a trusted friend or confidant family member that you can talk to. I think this probably is in the next one. Or um, 
if I feel really upset, then maybe I need to go for a walk and clear my head or like just have kind of a plan for when these things happen. I had recently received some counsel from like a, a spiritual advisor that, and they had said to like, go into the dark stuff do what you need to do and like deal with the heavy and then come out of it. So mm -hmm. give it that attention that you need and then say, I'm not going to dwell here. I'm going to pull out. So I thought that was really good counsel. So know that you will have those moments where you'll have to deal with the dark and the heavy and then, okay, now I'm going to go like kind of with the wolves, like acknowledge that the dark wolf and then move on to the light one. Yeah. The thing that scared me the most when I first got in this job, it was like the first week and I had a professor say that therapists are like angels or are, are, are go to places where angels are scared to tread. And that made me stop for a second and be like, wait, what? And he was just like, think about it. Like, we go into the demon places. We go into the darkest of the darks and we sit there. It's not the light, happy, fluffy. It's like, I will sit no. there in the biggest muck. If you go in my office, it's like the lightest thing. Like, everything is pretty happy. There's for a reason. Because the subject matter is always heavy day after day. And that's where it's like, it's fine to go dark, but you do have to come out and you have to know how to get yourself out. And that's usually the biggest obstacle for people is, can you face your demons? Can you talk about this? Can you fight this? And then be able to find that light and that beauty around you. And it's a very tricky balance some days because I will come home some days and be like, Benson, I'm done. And then he, now he just hands me my baby and it's all good. But yeah, <laughs> sometimes it's like, nope. But that is part of self-healing. You do have to kind of acknowledge that. You can't just ignore that. Um, yeah which sucks, but Actually, it's kind of cool though. The fact that you can go to those places. Yes. Well, it's yeah. Not. Well, it sucks when you're in it. That's what I'm saying. It like, totally you can't sucks. Be like, but I yeah. just remember thinking like when I was doing it, I'm like, I was, I was amazed that I was doing it. Like that first year in grad school, I was always just amazed. Like even while I was doing it, maybe it's because I was in grad school and they would pull you out enough to be able to see it. But I was always just like, wow, the fact that I'm like fighting this and doing this right now is like, cool like i just felt like such a ba i was like man i'm awesome and then you're like yeah it's just funny yeah and it's just kind of hard sometimes because it's like i'm one of those that wants to be a pink fluffy unicorn dancing on rainbows and then like yeah. I, all of a sudden you'll like run into like this like dark like ah, this? and it gets really scary you run sometimes into Sid from toy story <laughs> right yeah i'm just like bouncing along like doing my thing and the next thing is like ah, i'm done it's just the facts. It's hard. Mm -hmm. And that's where the fourth one comes into play of have support. Again, we're trained to do it. So use a therapist if it's a hard journey. And like, honestly, any journey is as nice as I have a therapist on. So therapists oh, are totally, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, friends, family, you need <laughs> to have I talk to a therapist support. every day. <laughs> hey, girl. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Good uh, thing we're friends. Like such an important thing. Another thing that I've seen like on Instagram and wherever is like, have your support, have your friends, make your social plans, whatever you're going through with your self healing and follow through with it. Um, make sure that you're taking that time to enjoy your time with your friends and your family and your loved ones. Even if you are going through things that you're trying to heal from, like don't just isolate yourself, stick with your people, yeah. keep your support. Oh yeah. So. I think that's the biggest thing is keeping your support and keeping it. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah, which is hard sometimes. So it's easier just to go be a hermit, but when you're really not feeling it, but just remember that you are worth it and you're loved. So stick with your support people. Yep. Our last little tip is identify your journey or your identity. And what do you want? Figure out so, what you want. I feel like when we're going through these journeys, I just remember... <laughs> I, this is funny. So you go into being a therapist because you have some base skills at helping people, right? And listening. So you're like, I'd be good at it. And I remember getting into it. And then finally, I was like, mom, I don't even know how to have a conversation. Like my mom was the one I went to therapy. You can see guys. Um, but I was like, I don't even know how to have a conversation anymore. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing. How do you respond? Like, what do you even say? And she just had to be like, Taylor, stop. You like, don't even think you know how to like, have like talk to people now. I'm like, well, it's just so complicated. And she's like, no, it's not. Do you remember who you are? And like your core. And I was like, well, no. Like, and it took me a minute to be like, wait, who am I really? What's my personality traits? And even though I've been through this whole journey and like, 
conceal these things about me? Who am I really? And I think as you're going through the self-healing process, you can get lost so easy and you can cling on to whatever's around you and you can take it on as your identity. And there's a lot of noise. And I think what you constantly have to do is reground yourself and say, what's my core? Who am I really? And am I true to my core or am I starting to drift because it sounds better? It sounds healing. It sounds whatever it is. Like there's a lot of techniques out there, guys. There's a lot of opinions, a lot of things. At the end of the day, I think we have to constantly say, who am I and who was I born to be and who do I want to be and how do those two go together? We shouldn't throw away what we naturally are. We should just learn how to highlight that and continue to help it grow and facilitate it, not not totally change from that because then you're just throwing your whole self out. You're throwing the whole vase out and you're not sticking to the idea of Kintsugi then. It's so true. I was just trying to look up a quote, um, what you had said about like not letting your, what you're going through, like define who you are. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I was thinking about Edith Ager. I, had, did you ever read the choice? No, did she, I did not. Okay. Uh, it was an amazing book. Edith Ager was a Holocaust survivor and she ended up becoming a therapist. And so the book, the choice goes through not only her time in the Holocaust and like her survival in Auschwitz, but then it carries on to like what she learned there and then how she like helped people throughout her whole life's journey um, as a therapist. And there's this one quote um, that was from her book, The Gift. I haven't read this one, but it's similar to things that she's been saying. It just says, as long as you're avoiding your feelings, you're denying reality. But if you try to shut something out and say, I don't want to think about it. I guarantee that you're going to think about it. So invite the feeling, sit down with it and keep it company. So like we'd said earlier, and then decide how long you're going to get to hold on to it because you're not a fragile little somebody. It's a good to face every reality to stop fighting and hiding to remember that a feeling is just a feeling. It's not your identity. So I love this so much. It's like, there's so much wisdom in this because it kind of encompasses everything that we had just said to like feel your feelings go through it. It's not going to define you. And then who are you? Like, what is your identity? Mm -hmm. Um, These horrible, horrible things that everybody goes through on their journey, right? All of these cracks that need to be filled in with gold. They are just a part of your story. They're just part of what makes you beautiful. It makes you, I was talking to a friend recently and, and she's like, your challenges in your life journeys just make you more empathetic. You're able to help and bless so many more people now because of what you've gone through in this life. And I think that if we can look at it that way and be like, this is just a part of my journey, but it doesn't define who I am. Like what, what, what really matters. And I think that really makes a huge difference. I think for me, what it, it really did is it was, it highlighted the parts of my personality that I didn't fully understand or see. Like it it gifted me an insight to myself of, These are the traits that will get me through anything. These are the traits that will hold me to me. And it it actually led to me, like looking back now, like the development that that time did for me was significant and it gave me the partner that I have. Like before I wasn't, um, I was always more shy, a little bit more reserved and and kind of things. And I, I am a spitfire now. Like everybody in my life knows that. Well, you always have been, but it like, it brought it out more. I feel like it just highlighted it. Like, but that's the thing, like you said, it was my personality. It was my identity, which you would see spurts of it growing up. But now it's like, it's pretty like big part of it. Like my husband, that was like the thing he was attracted to about me was I have an opinion and I will let you know it, you know, like, and that was, (laughs) But I feel like that got highlighted from this journey that I had. And I think that's where if you can start to let that come out for you and be true, then it, it will be better for you. Yeah, totally. Mm. Sorry. I think my baby's crying. So that was a random. <laughs> Hopefully my husband catches that. <laughs> Anyways, um, random pause for you guys. You're welcome. So Anything else from that? I think it's just, yeah, don't lose, don't lose sight of who you are because of your challenges. I think that that's kind of, yeah, feel all the feelings, acknowledge what you're feeling, learn your lessons from them, 
and then be like, how do I want to come out of this? It's kind of like going into a washing machine, you know, like you're like in the middle and you're like, okay, when I like come out of this like washing machine, what do I want to be? Um, I'm going to be beat up and I'm going to be spun around. What is this going to look like me on the, like for me on the flip kind side? Of a washing machine. That's what it feels like though. It totally feels like right? a washing machine. Oh yeah. Every time. Like- but I feel like it's a washing machine with carrots. Remember that lady, that mom knew growing up that she was friends with and she, um, she put carrots in the washing machine one time and ran her washing machine because she needed to wash a bunch of carrots. I forgot about that. <laughs> That's how I feel like it is sometimes. Yeah, and it's like you're banged around, you're beat up. How are you gonna come out? So, yeah, yeah that's that's how I feel like it is. So, yeah, it's kind of so funny. you've got this self healing is hard, but it's worth it. Um, I think I think one last thing because I I put actions that you you can do, and we're gonna talk about these a lot more in the second episode when we apply. So we're gonna do a second episode on self healing and application, but we're doing it to movies like as a case study because. Um, it's just an example of healing processes. So if you haven't seen these movies or don't know the stories, go watch them before next week so you can like really be invested in them if you want. So it's Cinderella, Nemo, Finding Nemo, and um, Maleficent. Maleficent. Yeah, Disney's Maleficent. So we're going to do it on those three. So we if you haven't seen Disney them. Disney themes. Because then this is something to like, if you would like to talk to your children about them or your teens, like this is going to be stuff that you'll learn stuff on your own mm-hmm. as well as you can use them for others. So I'm trying to like generalize it. So it's, it's, yeah, you know, everybody rated and you can take the application and kind of put it to your own story. Again, these are really complicated concepts. So therapy is a really big one for self healing. Like it, uh, this is a really, gray and deep subject but we're giving you the basics of it for that um but a part of the journey the actions that are usually used is forgiveness self-compassion positive self-talk gratitude mindfulness and taking care of your body those are like our basic foundations that we're always talking about i think and this is one thing i want to throw out there before we get into next week's stuff is look forgiveness is a very complicated concept and it is yeah it's so different in application for situations like I do high trauma treatment and like how forgiveness looks for somebody in a high traumatic situation versus others sometimes it's going to look like acceptance or sometimes it's going to look like you know just distance or um no longer holding a grudge or bitterness like it's a complicated concept that we're talking about there and asking for so like don't like when we talk about those ones we're, we'll clarify more when we apply them um self-compassion is like how do you give yourself grace how do you not negative self talk yourself positive self-talk obviously how do you speak kindly towards yourself we are very very mean to ourselves but not to mm-hmm. others which is like right on, if you wouldn't say it to somebody else then why would you say it? i think you've said before too like if you wouldn't say it to your dog like koa if you wouldn't say it to koa why would you say this to yourself? I've literally had my dog sit in my lap and they had to, clients have had to say what they're thinking about themselves to Koa and half of them refuse. And then the other half start crying halfway through because they feel terrible, which right? I mean, I, that's the whole point, but not to feel terrible, but to, to realize like this verbiage that you're using is aggressive and mean, and you would never even think about using it on this beautiful little creature but you use it all the time on this other beautiful little creature yourself. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating. And this beautiful little creature probably can't even understand half the words you're saying there, you know, versus, yeah. I know. It's so sad. It's, sad, it's but like you the can. things we allow ourselves to do are, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so those are the ones we will pull in and kind of highlight for them next week. Do we have any questions on those ones, sister? I don't think so. I Just remember that this is a very basic overview. So like these five points that we just talked about, like picking the path that you want to take, having a plan and setting goals, identifying your obstacles and knowing how you can work around them, having the support and then identifying your journey or your identity and realizing what you want. These are just like 
really basic guidelines. So if you were to take this, you know, um, and make yourself a little bullet list or whatever, these are going to look different for each of us. So if you put these five points on a piece of paper, mine would look so different than Taylor's. Mm -hmm. There is no one size fits all. And I just want everybody to remember that, that you do you and let's all come out of this better. So I think the biggest thing that I always take away after having conversations like these is Remember that you have worth. You are not meant to be thrown away. You are valuable, just like that piece of pottery is valuable. You are meant to be honored. You are meant to be highlighted, and you are meant to be more valuable. You are a human being, the most precious thing that you cannot replace or easily get rid of. Like You have value and meaning. Every human does, right? And that's where remember that you have worth, remember what you are made of and remember that you have the purpose, but we forget all those things because we get wounded and we get broken. Broken does not mean it's garbage. Broken just means that it needs to be healed and how we heal is more important than the break. And I think that's where people get really stuck on it's broken. It's broken. Okay. So things get broken, but it can be fixed and things can be healed and it's not meaning it's going to look the same. It's meaning it's going to be better. How can we make it better? And that's why I love yeah. the Kintsugi analogy. You will be healed. It's just going to leave a mark. And you can make that mark beautiful or you can hide that mark and be a weaker, less valuable thing than you were before. I personally want to be more valuable and shiny because I like shiny stuff. <laughs> I'm like the crab yeah. from Moana. I know that's actually what went in my head. I'm shining. Um, you've got this. It feels heavy some days. And remember that the chart from A to Z is all over the place. It's a total zigzag. You were going through a washing machine. And that's okay. Just don't forget these five points. And you can Be do this. Spooky. So thank you for listening. And we hope this has helped you. Uh, find us on Uhani Counseling on social media. And then we will be sharing some of these reminders, charts, and resources throughout the week. We appreciate all of you. And thank you for listening. Bye. Bye.